So I'm going to be talking about two chapters, which is the cigarette and the passport. So first, the cigarette. The main characters are Marju's mom, some are her two friends, and Marju. So this is how the story goes. Marju skips school for the first time, and this is kind of an influence because of her 14-year-old friends. She skips school, then she comes back home, and she realizes that her mom found it out. And this kind of leads to a small conflict between Margie and her mother, because Margie talks back. And after a small conflict, she goes to her hideaway, which is the basement. And in her basement, she talks about what happened during that time in Iran. So Iranian army took Kuro Shahar. I don't know if that's how that's pronounced. And what happened is that uh, Iran finally had a chance to retain peace, but then the government didn't want peace again. So they uh, imposed not peace, not to have peace in the country. So people started writing harsh slogans on the walls. They were in a combat mode. And people who rebelled were executed. And then after Margie talking about her Iranian uh, experiences, she smokes. She brought two cigarettes. Uh, she was given two cigarettes from her uncle. She sneaked it out. And she smoked as a rebellion to her brother. And these are some of the quotes that he said, that smoking is a way of her becoming a rebel. And this is also a significant passage because Margie was just 12, and then her smoking is kind of a huge change in her life. And her rebellion towards her mom by smoking kind of portrays an image of rebellion from the group of people towards the government. And the theme is coming of age and so this is the question. How does the basement and the cigarette link with the rebellion in Iran? <laughs> and I think it's like the basement is kind of like a forbidden place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like basement and cigarette is kind of forbidden, right? It doesn't have a good view. Like basement is underground. It's always dark. Cigarette always has negative views. So I felt like the rebellion in Iran more, was um, portrayed as more negative views instead of being a positive, how people stand up for themselves. And this is another significant passage. Just don't look at the text, but look at the silhouette. silhouette. For me, I felt like the mother was portrayed as a soldier holding a gun. And uh, it shows how people's rebellion, like Margie's rebellion towards her mom by skipping school, is repressed by her mom. Like the freedom and the right of speaking is all repressed. The mom is also in control. And it's kind of like how the government and the soldiers are in control of the citizens. So, here's a Marjorie before. And it shows resistance to change and rebellion. Is rebellion a wrong or right action to take? Depending on the situation. <laughs> can anyone be specific? Like, how can it be wrong? How can because if it rebels is something like, perhaps if you force me to eat um, cat meat and I don't like cat meat, I think it's okay to rebel against not eating cat meat. Like, so if your village is used in the right way, it was probably used when people try to gather new groups to speak up their voices and to work for the right of country. But if it's used in the wrong way, it would be like skipping school, smoking, doing drugs, because you want to rebel against your stress in schools. And the text itself is family conflicts. First of all, Margie presents conflicts with the rebellion in Iran. So there are a lot of conflicts in the world today, and individual conflicts overlap with world conflicts, such as uh, individuals can have small fightings in their own houses or in their own families, but then it also kind of covers up with the country conflict, which is wars and kind of gets influenced. And also, usually conflicts lead to rebellion. For example, not all the times, but people who need divorce problems or family issues, it kind of leads to a rebellion in the children, such as like uh, ignorative parenting style leads to our, uh, children becoming more rebellious. And also the text to the world, government control and influence. For example, even nowadays, like North Korea and ISIS crisis, people still impose not to have peace. They want war. They want combat sports. And uh, the government try to control and influence the people. Even though the people want to have peace, they don't want 
that says it's required. And the other chapter is the passport. The characters are Marjorie, her mom, her dad, Uncle Tahar, his wife, the passport maker, and Nilo Farm. <laughs> so this is how the story goes. Uh, it's set in a place of Uncle Tahar's house, and Tahar kind of talks about his stress in life, such as hearing gunshots of getting executed and how he misses his son in Holland. Uh, and then after this, Marge's father gets a phone call that Tahar was actually hospitalized because he heard of the news and he kind of had a shock. So what the hospital said to Tahar's family was that he needs to be transferred to another foreign hospital outside of overseas to get a better treatment. But then the only way of getting outside of the country is to get a passport. And if you want to get a passport, you need to get a permission from the director. So Tahar, Tahar's wife, she looks around, she goes talk to the directors, but then all they say is that, oh, you don't have rights, there's so many people other than you, and like, it's not the God's will to make you have a passport. So what Margie's father does is decides to make a fake passport. And this is the passport maker. And out of nowhere, this girl comes out, Nilo Far. She's not a really a uh, significant character, but she kind of shows some kind of long actions in Iran. She was a communist, and she was escaping in the passport maker's house. But later on, she gets executed, uh, and then the passport maker runs away because her uh, his settlement was found out, and his possessions were taken away. And Uncle Tahar eventually gets buried, but it's because he gets, he dies on the same day that he gets his actual passport. This is a significant passage. I chose this because it presented a strong religious background. For example, back in the days, uh, like in example for Iran, they used religion for tools instead of moral rights. For example, they use religion saying that the God chose tools. They use religion in education to kind of like put people in certain box. And I feel like this passage, he's given the excuse of God that he can't give the permission to get a passport. That is not the God's will. So the theme is religion. So is being religious always the right way in certain situations? If you stand up for your own opinion, you're gonna die. So, text yourself. Uh, first, losing someone. 
up close. My grandfather is a North Korean, and he lost a lot of his family. He didn't get to see him before he died, so like he never got to see him ever again. So I feel like everybody loses someone close to them, and sometimes it's the country who's making them do it, or sometimes it's just natural. But it kind of happens all the time. And another thing is self-religion. Like just like I said, I'm Christian, so I kind of think fit my things to the Christian instead of life. But some people it's different. So everybody has different religions, everybody has different cultural aspects, but they somehow all work together and help their legacy and stuff. And another thing is text to world. For example, the right of traveling in Iran, Uncle Tahar never got to travel, even though even though he was sick, and he never got to see his son again. And I felt like that's kind of happening now. For example, in North Korea, you can't travel. You can't see people who like you used to love before. And another thing is right of receiving health care. Uncle Tara couldn't receive health care because of all the director issues and things that he is not supposed to give him a passport. Until the, the day he <coughs> actually died, he got a passport. But even now, for example, social classes, if you don't have insurance in America, it's very hard for you to get health care. And another thing is like if you're poor, don't have proper health care and you die, it kind of leads to poverty and everything. That's it. 